Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we have a very, very highly requested video. I'm going to be showing you how you can make and build your own Monopoly from scratch so that you can do whatever theme you want yourself at home. The first thing, obviously, is the actual board itself. Um, and so what you need for this and what I use is a piece of A1 sized mount board from, I buy it from Hobbycraft, it costs £3.30 I believe. So you have the A1 size and then the measurements for this. I'm going to show you the measurements on the original board just so it's easier, it makes more sense. So the actual board is 20 inches by 20 inches, it's a perfect square. Um, the A1 size is big enough for that, you'll have a couple of pieces of card left over that you can use for whatever you want. And then the corners are three inches, so if you mark three inches um, on both sides of each of the, each four corners and then you can just draw a line connecting them up and you have that line there. And then each of these individual spaces in between the corners are roughly 3.9 to 4 centimeters i'm really sorry that some of it's in inches and some of it's in centimeters i don't know why but that's just how i found it when i looked it up uh, so yeah so 20 inches for the board three inches for the corners and then 3.4 3.4 3.9 sorry 3.9 centimeters for these little properties in the middle once you've cut out your board, obviously as you saw the A1 piece of board that I have is white and if you want the Monopoly, you can just paint it whatever colour you want, but if you want it that nice like standard Monopoly green colour, my advice or uh, what I did would be get a reference picture or actually get your Monopoly board that you have um, as a reference and I just mix this, it's acrylic paint. Um, overestimate on how much paint you need the first time around I did it I didn't do enough paint and then you'll never get the same color again definitely so um always mix more paint than you need the paint mix that I kind of did um I did just kind of eyeball it but it's just quite a lot of white um some different shades of green I sort of had like a lime green and like a, a mint green that I mixed together and you may need like the tiniest tiniest little bit of blue to get this shade but yeah literally just keep mixing acrylic paint is completely fine i actually added a little bit of water into my paint just to make it um, a bit smoother on the board so that's a little top tip um, for you if you want i'd also make sure that you have as i said overestimate on paint but that's that also works because if you make any mistakes when you're painting your board you have that original color paint that you can just go and touch up the bits where you went wrong and that's what i did and that was really helpful for me so i definitely recommend keeping it in like a little tupperware box so it doesn't dry out so you still have this paint while you're making it so then moving on to the cards the property cards and the chance and community chess cards are very conveniently all exactly the same size i have the measurements so you need 5.7 centimeters by 8.9 centimeters and i am going to show you how i make them all i have this blank template which i'm really hoping you're not going to get too much glare on but this is for the property cards as i said you set this up the program that i use to make everything here the cards the money everything is called procreate uh, it does cost £10, um, it's just a one-off payment, you pay £10 once and then you have the app forever. Um, I definitely think it's worth it, I mean obviously I've personally used it a lot, um, so I would recommend if you if you want to do this, um, definitely. But yeah, so you set up the size, as I said, 5.7 times 8.9 centimetres. And then I actually kind of eyeballed this. One way you can do it on Procreate is if you can take a picture of an actual card that you have and import it in, you can kind of trace um, the lines that you want. But you just have, you have this border that I put in, I eyeballed that, uh, a line at the bottom. I might um, put like a picture here or something so you can see this a bit better. The top is just the square that you put in um, the color for your properties. And then within this square, which I will show you on an actual example. So within the square, this is so bad, I'm sorry, I will put a picture in. Within the square, you put the title of the property that you're gonna put on the board, as well as at the top, you put a tiny little thing that says title deed. And then the categories that you have, you have rent, rent with color set, rent, rent with one house, whichever you choose your house to be, that's what it'll say. So one house, rent with two houses, rent with three houses, rent with four houses, rent with, um, a hotel um, and then at the bottom you have how much the 
houses cost and how much the hotels cost um, and that's there. Uh, the numbers um, obviously completely change from set to set. Uh, what I did is I just copied the original Monopoly set that I have. You can just copy those numbers and change the um, monetary currency. The currency, yeah. You can just change whatever currency that you want to have set. Um, I am actually going to create a blank template uh, for you guys to use if you want to um, create one of these yourself because um, I think that will just be easier. So I will put a link to that. Um, it's on my Etsy. I'll put the link in the description and that will help you all out because it'll have all the measurements already done for you. Um, and I'll also like make a little kit document that kind of explains how to use it. So if you're interested in that, I'll put the link in the description. On the back of the property cards, it's pretty simple. You again, just have the border and then you put mortgaged at the top. And then all you have to do is you put the name of the property and the mortgage for, and then the value. Again, I just took this value straight from the original Monopoly cards and just copied it. And then you have a little catchphrase at the bottom. I'm not really sure I'd call it a catchphrase. Um, it says card must be turned this side up if the property is mortgaged. Um, and that's just essentially kind of telling you how you play the game. Um, so the back's pretty simple. And then obviously you can just put whatever design you want on there, depending on the theme that you're choosing to do for your Monopoly. The next thing is the chance and community chess cards. Everything that I just said about the property card essentially applies to these. There's not too much that I can say about how you make these because it really is up to you depending on what you want your theme as. Um, but obviously this, you have to make sure you print the same number of these that you have community chess cards. There are 16 community chess cards and 16 chance cards. So that's how many you'll need of these. Um, and then I just did um, like a small picture and then sort of the thing that you say. I'm gonna list off how many of each type of card you want. Um, obviously this is completely up to you. You can do it how you want. If you want to just go rogue and have some like different kind of themed chance cards in there, you definitely can. But I just like to keep it exactly to how it is in the Monopoly. Um, so I'm gonna read them out. I'm gonna be reading off this. So I'm sorry if I'm just looking at this all the time, but there are cards where this is both community chest and chance cards combined total. So this is how many you should have. And then you can just divvy them up um, depending on which one you want. I couldn't find that information on them. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six. You have seven cards where you gain money. So that's cards that say things like collect a hundred pounds. Um, any cards like that where you're gonna have an increase of money um, and then lose money seven again you have seven cards that will say things like pay a hundred pounds whether that's pay to the player to your left or pay to the bank um, they vary you can do whichever you want uh, there are two get out of jail free cards one goes in each pile um, that's pretty self-explanatory. The housing repairs, there's two of these. Um, they're both slightly different, so I will read them out. Um, one of them is you have to pay 25 pounds for every house you own and 100 for every hotel you own. And the other one is the same thing, but the numbers are different. So the other one is 40 pounds for every house you own and 115 for every hotel you own. My favourite cards, especially when you're coming up with a theme, are the Advance 2 cards. So any cards that say, like, in the original Monopoly, it would say Advance to Mayfair, um, those kind of cards. There are nine of those cards. Um, so yeah, have fun coming up with those. And then the Go To Jail cards, I think this is to match up with the um, Get Out of Jail Free cards, is there's two. Again, one of each go in um, each set. And then finally, there are three cards that are go back so many spaces. On the Harry Potter one, I did three spaces, two spaces and five spaces. So I made sure they were all slightly different. And that's it. That's the information you need for what cards to pick. Moving on to the money. Um, again, I made these on Procreate. Um, I just created a pretty basic template. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory on this. The best way I would recommend doing it is just getting a picture either from your actual Monopoly set or just you can find one on like Google Images really easy. Um, but the size you need is 9.9 .9 centimeters by 4.7 centimeters. That's the size for this money. Um, in terms of how many of each you print, I actually don't know the answer to that. I kind of guessed. Uh, you definitely need like quite a lot of ones, quite a lot of like hundreds and then slightly less of the ones in the middle. I personally just printed an even amount, but it does really depend how many people you're playing with. But obviously you can always go back and print more if you need to. 
Same again with the printing. The Monopoly, the money um, is actually thinner than the card. So you want to just print this on like a normal paper size. So you can print this yourself at home, but if you're going to be sending things off the printer, I think it's always better quality if you get it done print properly because you can have these printed on like glossy paper and then they um, are like normal money. But uh, print this like normal um, paper side. You can find all the GSM information online or I'll put it in the description if I can find it before this. I kind of assume everyone knows this already, but just in case you don't, for the money you need ones, fives, tens, twenties, fifties, a hundreds and five hundreds. Um, all of them can be different colours, you can make them however you want. If you've seen me making the Disney Princess Monopoly, I really made them like a variety of different colours and I did them like different princess themed. Um, so yeah, you can play around with it and have fun with it if that's what you want to do. In terms of transferring these from the digital copy that you make onto an actual physical copy, there are two ways to do it. Um, they depend on how much like time you want to put in versus how much money you want to put in, I suppose. So the first one is if you just want to use your at-home printer, that's what um, I did for this set. Um, so you can print out, you just import all of your cards onto a Microsoft, I use PowerPoint, um, you can get nine cards on each page and then you just print it off using your normal home printer. Um, I then cut them out and just stuck them on the leftover mount board that I had from the um, making the board. You can also just use card if you have card or if you can print onto card, that's ideal. Um, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, and then I just stuck these on either side. So these are just stuck onto a piece of card. Um, they look less good quality, I think. It depends how good your at-home printer is. Mine wasn't great, so the quality is not amazing. The second way that you can do it is I, once you create that document with all the cards on, um, you can send it off to a print service that you can find on Google. I use one called Print Pond. I think I just used that one because it was the cheapest one that I found and it had the nicest user interface website that was easy to use. I printed off in 270 GSM, I think. Um, I will double check that and put it uh, here somewhere um, in case that's wrong. Uh, but yeah, that just means you get the nice thick card and if you line it up properly properly on the thing, I will insert a clip on how to do that here quickly, um, you can set it to print double-sided and so it'll flip and the cards will automatically be printed double-sided um, correctly. You don't have to do any um, sticking onto the backs or anything, all you have to do is cut them out when they come. These clips are going to be really bad quality, I'm really sorry, I think you'll probably still get the kind of idea. So as I said, you line up all of your property cards on here, um, make sure they're all evenly spaced and make sure this one is directly in the centre. The easiest way to do that is to put this image into a Word document and then just copy and paste it into here and Word automatically formats this one in the middle. And then you have the little adjustment so you can make sure these are exactly the same space apart. And then the most important thing here, and I'm gonna show you with this example. So this one here is the Slytherin common room. And I'm gonna to go to the next slide, which is the backs of them. You need to make sure that this one here is the Slytherin common room so that they're mirrored because when you print double-sided, um, you have it to flip and it'll flip like this. Um, so to ensure that they work, they need to be opposites. And that's the most important thing when printing these cards. Same again for the charts and community chess cards. As you can see over here, um, you have the backs that you want followed by the slide with the cards that you want and you alternate like this and so that you make sure that when you print double-sided, the backs automatically are printed on the same side of the fronts. The flipping on this doesn't really matter too much. You just have to think about what way up you want the thing that you've put on the back to be. Really, that's the main thing. And then the last thing is the money. Same again, you can unfortunately only fit about eight on a slide because they are a bit of a strange shape, but you need to make sure that the slides are two of the same, again, so that when you print them, they print back to front and you have the same. This, I didn't really worry too much about whether the numbers were gonna be the same way up, but you can consider that and play around with it a little bit if that's what you want. In terms of printing, this is the website I use. It's called Print Pond, and then I select document printing and as you can see here you essentially just upload your file the number of copies you want and the number of pages that you want to print of that document um, and then obviously size a4 size color black and white and then here you would select double-sided um, it just, just doesn't like that because I haven't got enough pages but yes double-sided orientation of print I just did auto and that worked and then paper type so for the money um, I think I went 
with 130 white silk um, and then for the cards I think I did 250 GSM um, for the cards and that's what you need obviously no hole punch for the this is up to, up to you whether you want to do like a gloss finish or a matte finish I didn't bother it's not necessary um, and that's essentially it and then you print um, obviously I've not put much pages here so this price isn't really correct um, but yeah have a play around with it in terms of making um, all the playing pieces and the houses and hotels and stuff I'm not going to include that in this video here because I do have um, several videos on just showing you how I made them I will put the links to those in the description if you want to refresh your memory um, but I made everything out of polymer clay you could buy that on Amazon and the way it works is you just uh, mold your thing and then you put it in the oven for like 20 minutes depending on your clay um, and then they come out hard and either you can make them using coloured clay so they're already done once you put them in the oven or what I did was I made them out of white polymer clay and then uh, painted them afterwards using the same acrylic paint that I used to paint the board. So um, in terms of playing pieces you need eight playing pieces of whatever theme you want to do. For the hotels you need 12 hotels and for the houses, you need 32 houses, which um, I'm sure you can imagine there's quite a lot of houses that took around a really long time. So I would advise um, making something simple for the houses because you will be there a long time making a lot of them. I think I've covered absolutely everything. If I've missed anything, I'm really sorry. Please put it in the comments and I will add in sort of like extra videos and stuff covering those things. As I said, I have created a complete blank um, copy of this Monopoly that you can uh, buy pretty cheap on my Etsy. I'll put the link to that in the description and then you can um, play around with it. Um, it's digital so you just make the colours and put the pictures in that you want. Um, it's just so all the sizing is pre-done for you um, and things like that. So yeah, definitely check that out if you're interested. But I hope this was helpful if you guys want to make your own Monopoly. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments and I'll be sure to answer them. But that's it for today. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. That really helps me out a lot. Um, but that's it. Thank you so much for watching.